Hi guys, we're going to consider how we use an artist influence within our work. Now when you're doing a GCSE or A level, you obviously have to document and explain connections to things. So this process has been designed in effect for the classroom, but can be used in wider work. Now the work we have here before us is by an artist called Jim Dine. He's an American artist. He was born in 1935 in Ohio and this is just a selection of his work. This does not represent the life work of this particular artist. I've been and found these particular pictures and selected them on a common theme. So I've been focused when I've gathered my work. Ideally, I'd love to go and see his work in an exhibition. Um, I could read about it in a book or a magazine and I can do some research on the internet. And all those things would add to what I can take from this artist as an influence. In the wider research, I found out that Jim Dine's grandfather had had a hardware shop, which I thought was quite interesting. And Jim Dine refers to these tools as primary objects and makes a connection to the past with the handmade. And I thought that was quite interesting. We live in an era where we turn to technology very readily. And I quite like the idea that these objects tie to something bigger. So that's already could be an influence in my work. So in the past, what we would have done is uh, taken a pen and diagram labelled our observations. We're going to do that task, but in a slightly different way. I have a sheet of tracing paper. It's quite good quality tracing paper. But grease food paper um, and baking parchment, those types of things do work in a similar way. I'm going to zoom in a little onto the image. So I'm going to write notes and doodle on top of the image um, to really help me focus my thoughts. So the first thing I'm going to consider is I'm just roughly drawing some of the shape. Don't have to draw the whole thing. So the shape of the object, there's a dominant object in this particular picture. Um, the overall piece of work, it kind of sits. I have cropped some of these pictures to put on the worksheet and I do make a note of that on this worksheet. So it sits slightly off centre. It sits within a kind of rectangle or square shape. And the viewpoint I would consider is a side view. So the first thing I'm going to note is side view. By that, I'm saying it is not, I'm going to pick up a little tool. So it's in a side view. It's not in a three quarter view and it's not sort of looking at an, an unusual end. It is a, a very clear side view. So that's an important thing. And it's kind of within a kind of square rectangular shape off field. We'd call that a field in effect, the, the picture plane, the picture surface. Now, one thing I could note, it's monochromatic. It's monochromatic. Um, it's black and white. It could be white on black. Um, we're looking at the surface qualities now and here it's kind of like a crack. It's like a drawn crack. It's not like an actual crack in, in a piece of work. And here there's some sort of marks that might look a bit more dragged. I did this with one of my pupils and he felt that these dots weren't drawn as I'm drawing them now. Kind of a spray texture. That's what he considered. I thought that was a good observation. Now in places it's completely plain. In another area it's quite dark. So there's tonal range. It's not fully descriptive of the actual surface. I can't really read the form in full. I can see there's some sort of shadow down the side of that, which is suggesting there is volume to there. So I can put shadow. But there isn't a strong light casting a shadow on one side, a really obvious shadow. There's kind of these areas that are kind of like solid and these areas that are kind of more textured. So this process of writing these notes has actually made me really look and consider the artist's work. Now this is quite a straightforward piece of work in as much as it is a singular object on a picture plane. If we looked at another one over here, we could do the exact same task and put um, a tracing over the top of it. Put 
two tracings there just one moment and again it's in the same viewpoint it's in the same side view so i'm going to just draw the shape of these screwdrivers but they are in a group now they are arranged with order so they're arranged in a row so i could make a note about a row straight of all straight away i don't have to comment on everything here these marks are kind of in the negative space now if you wonder what a negative space is if you consider the object to be the positive everything around it being the negative so it's a background area but because it's not pictorial it's you wouldn't say it's on a workbench because you don't really know um, these marks and smudges are quite interesting. They're a little bit different from the spray paint ones we've seen elsewhere. If we look over at this one here, this looks more drawn rather than the spray paint quality I've seen on that one. I'm not saying it is spray paint, but it kind of looks like a wet media that has been in some way stippled or sprayed. Here there's a very clear line-like mark into this image. The line here, the crack line that we've seen in the previous one, I'd say it has a different weight to it. And by that, I'm pressing hard and getting lighter. It's hard to do it with a pen. It's much easier to do with a pencil. But those qualities are things that I would possibly take through into my own work. Now, when we list keywords, monochromatic, texture, surface, those types of things, we might consider the process. We've talked about spray paint. We've talked about drawn marks. We might consider connections. We could think about what Jim Dine said about these objects having a place in history, a handmade, a man-made kind of sense of, of these objects. Um, we could make connections to tools we have at home. Um, I've been into my drawer and this is a little pair of pliers. I've had them for probably 30 or 40 years um, since I was quite young, um, quite rusty. And so those surfaces do connect to Jim Dine's um, work. They do look a little bit like this. Um, how would I now use this within my work? I would probably draw the object in side view, just as we are here. I might compose it on a rectangular piece of paper. I might work into the background with different techniques, probably monochromatics, first of all. But having observed the surface on here, I might consider bringing, introducing a little bit of colour, maybe rusty colours and browns. I want to suggest something of the history, the age of this object. So I would want to explore and experiment with materials. So I have a very clear plan of how the artist Jim Dine is going to influence the choices I'm going to make in my drawing. So I've taken it one step further. I have made an oil pastel monoprint. I did this in a classroom with some year 10s and it's a transfer technique. So I've drawn it in the style of Jim Dine. I've gone for the side on view. I've tried to draw it with a sort of broken line. It's not like a clear, solid Bart Simpson-like outline. It's kind of broken, suggesting age. I put some textures and marks and some tones on it. Remember I talked on the scissors about some shadow to suggest a little bit of volume. You can see it just up here. So I've applied some textures. I started drawing into the background, just like Jim Dine has in some of these areas, little bits of cracks and marks. I photocopied this particular piece onto cartridge paper, which allowed me to demonstrate in the lesson a range of different techniques. I went on to use some with wet materials, but in this one I have used rubbing and drawing. Now by rubbing, I'm talking about textures and getting my pencil to a shallow angle and kind of working at a low angle. I worked onto that with black pencil crayon, not standard graphite. You can see it's in black and it's finished rather than the kind of metallic -y shine that you get with a standard pencil. I've really considered the types of marks that we analysed and we looked at Jim Dine originally, these weighted lines in the cracks. You can see I've pressed hard, got lighter. I've done several of these cracks. I've been careful to think where these lines would continue beyond the object. So it looks like the thing is below, the surface is below and it's consistent. Because it's dry materials, I didn't go for any of the spray techniques on this particular study, but I did rub on some sort of hessian texture, which creates a kind of stipply type of mark. I kept working back into this particular piece, so you can see it's developed quite far from the original. But this shows the influence of the artist 
I've learnt something as I've experimented about the types of materials and marks. Sometimes you might take these experiments too far and you might obliterate the image, it might not work particularly well. You could take this image and you could then work back into it with wet materials. But if you have photocopy access or scanner access, you can obviously take a copy of it so you can show the stages of your development if you're recording a GCSE project.